Question. God bless you. Yeah. Call the uh, planning board meeting to order, September 5th, 6.33 p.m. Um, we have an agenda. Oh, this is uh, electronic, uh, elect, uh, videotape recorded and going to be broadcast at live now and, and it can be broadcast at a later date through YouTube or the town website. Tell them that our ratings are up? Hmm? Can you tell them that our ratings are up? I don't know what our ratings <laughs> are. Our advertisers have certainly dropped away. Uh, um, I thought last night we would have been welcoming a new member, but uh, that, that vote has, the vote to fill the vacant seat has been postponed until Monday the 10th at 6.37, when are we? I can't make it. 6.30. Monday. You can't. I've got six concrete trucks. Well, you, all right, but you said you, said you could last night. But Can I did call, does it, does it make any, is it legal to call and say to you, this is the person that I would like to? Um, I think we can get permission from the select board to do a remote call in. Um, All right, let me get back to you because I am pushing to get this job started at 6 o'clock on Monday morning. I will ask Ryan if it's permissible to have you write a letter, you know, if in, in, like an absentee ballot. Okay. I don't know if that's legal, right. but um, let's work on something to, to have you have your vote count. Um, I haven't heard from anybody else, but I think, Bill, you can make it? Yes. And Craig, and Craig, I think Craig said he could make it. Craig said last night he could. And yeah. I apologize. No. If, if I can possibly be here, I will. Why don't we uh, figure out a way to do this? Actually, I will know Friday whether I can. Well, you can't let the concrete get hard in the truck. No, and I want, <laughs> I, um, I want hmm. her to convince the guy that I work for that I want this started at 6 o'clock. The trucks can be there at 6. I know that. This is a.m.? A.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I had an agenda. You've introduced a couple things. Correspondence. Uh, can we take them later? Um, because we have a yeah. guest. Uh, two guests here, or many guests, but we have two guests that are going to be on around 7. So let's see if we can't get through this. Um, can you flip to the purpose uh, document, that uh, the PowerPoint first slide? I try to, try to uh, bring out the purpose of the planning board uh, in our uh, zoning bylaws, Article 1, um, uh, these zoning bylaws are adopted for the following purposes, and these are, of course, the purpose of the planning board. Um, to ensure realization of the general statement of purpose declared in Chapter 40 of the state law, uh, to protect the right of every resident of the town of Hubbardson to clean air and water, freedom from excessive and unnecessary noise or odor, and the natural scenic, historic, and aesthetic qualities of the environment as declared in Article something of the Constitution of Massachusetts. Uh, permit and assure planned orderly growth in the town of Hubbardston and provide for compatible development and use of the town's land and resources uh, to provide adequate housing and services to residents. Visitors, employees, and towns in the, in, in the town of Hubbardston. And here, um, is a copy of this whole thing for you so you don't have to take oh, a picture of it. Thanks. I can give it to you electronically as well. So, um, next slide, please. And we're doing, and we're trying to make sure the, the public's business done in public, compliance with open meeting laws, public record laws, conflicts of interest laws. Sorry to interrupt. The lady who was just coming through was just indicating that there's an alarm going off in the, in the main building. I don't know if this is the library. library? I, I have no idea. Uh, is it from the library or she couldn't tell me. But I 
I think it's something we can just check in. No, it's okay. Right. If I don't come back in 20 minutes. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it may be just a trip uh, store or something like that. It goes uh, off. Conflict of interest, ethical standards, and uh, always done in the best interest of town. Um, these are called out in our charter, and there's nothing new for them. These are really the, the uh, highlighted laws. So <coughs> returning to the agenda, um, there's an open meeting law training opportunity coming up in Orange in September, if you care to attend, put on by the Office of the Attorney General. Um, Patty stepped out, so I'm going to jump over the meeting minutes of August 20th. Um, Borrego uh, is the next topic. Um, Williamsville and Gardner Road, we have a report from the administrative assistant uh, regarding the checks they've provided. They've provided um, the money that we would um, reimburse Bill Murray with. And um, we have that money. And the last thing I remember Tom Bratko talking about quite a bit was the fact that the accounting for that money wasn't straightforward. It was, it was uh, to some extent, um, a little confusing. So I'm going to wait till Patty comes back, and I'm going to ask her where did she put the checks, and how do we get them out of our accounts mm -hmm. back into uh, Bill Murray's. Um, there's three three checks arrived from Borrego. <coughs> Tom, I got a question about the Borrego. I was, the more I was thinking about it. What? What, what, what do we go by? Because we said you said during that meeting that we don't have to do a special oh, permit meeting. on Borrego on and the change that they did down there with well, these new solar panels because it was a it was a small change. To me, that seemed like a big one. Um, and it, well, and that was all under a special permit that you folks went through a, a big process to approve that. Um, is that really? what we should be doing, or should we go back and look and should we modify the special permit? I don't know. And that's why I'm asking. I wanted to know well, what rules do we go by to... to in, in the permit, there's a clause that says if there are minor changes, the, the board takes no action. And I, I predict that over the course of doing this project, there'll be 100 minor changes. Right, but that doesn't seem like and a minor change. It seems like a pretty good size one. Well, our, you, in the first meeting of August 1st, you and Craig said uh, you didn't want to proceed. I, I viewed it as minor. We took a vote. It was a 2-2 vote. I said, well, look, you guys wanted to hear Bill Murray's opinion. Right, right. We sent Bill Murray off. He wrote the report, and he came back and said it was minor. He um, said in his report that it was minor? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was his, and you have a copy of that report. Yes, I do. Um, and that minor decla the declaration of it being a minor change means that the board doesn't have to take any action. If if they're down there and they have to move a gate or you know put right, the trees minor. three feet over, um, then the board is not going to reopen the permit. Right. And the permit was done several months ago. Mm -hmm. um, Bill substantiated it quite well in his report and. Our, did we post that report on our website so that anybody, if they want to, can read it? I'm sorry, which report was that? This, this is Bill Murray's report on 147 Williamsville Road presented last month. No. Not a decision. Oh. It was a, uh, I'll, I'll make sure it gets posted. Okay. Well, I have a copy of it. Yeah, you have a copy. Yeah, 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 I do. But for the general public, I mean. Right. Okay. I was just, I was thinking about it. Just That's, like a big you change. were here. You were listening to what they were saying. I mean, come on. No, no, I, <laughs> I'm the one who's got the hearing aids. <laughs> okay, settle down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just a question, because I know Borrega has uh, more than one solar project. Was this the project where they were going to put in the batteries and the houses to store the batteries? And is that the one that we're talking about? Yes. So that was considered all of those buildings and, and the batteries were considered a minor change? 
Well, they, they weren't buildings as such. They were containers for the batteries. They come in, in like a shipping container. And um, yes, it was. And Bill wrote a very good report. Uh, he checked with four or five area towns that are doing the same thing. He checked with other building inspectors. He checked with our electrical inspector. I think he did a very thorough job. No, he did do a good job on his report. I was just, my, my side of it, I was just, more I was thinking about it, it seemed like a big change that was changing the concept a lot of what they were doing. Well, to just the solar to the bat. I know there was some it. discussion about whether they would revisit the pilot, the selectmen would revisit the pilot based upon the yeah, fact the that in the, uh, there is no pilot yet. Stored energy. And there is no pilot yet to revisit. There's no pilot on the project at all. That's right. Not yet. I mean, so that, I think they're. I think they're in early negotiations or have oh. filled out some forms, but it has. The pilot started after that meet. The pilot discussion started after that meeting, so the batteries are included in it. But places like Haywood Hospital, uh, Holy uh, Holy Holy Name High School, I think in, it's in Worcester. Report. Yeah, th there's there was quite a few that he did. Four research. or five area towns are all doing this. It's a peak shaving technique on the on the power. Thank you. Um, real quick, Patty. Uh, do you have you been able to, independent of Tom Bretko being here, <laughs> have you been able to figure out where these checks go? What account? No. Okay. Um, can we? What do I have to do? Do I have to meet with you I and the account? They, they go in the revolving account. I believe that's what Tom and Lori and I had discussed at one of the later meetings, and I don't think anything's changed. But I just want to confirm that with her. Um, did I put no, the account number? I don't see. Oh uh, yes, I, no. I see check number and an amount and and what project it relates okay. to. What we didn't want to do was drop them all in one big bucket. We wanted to have the accounting. No, no I believe they do. These ones do go in the bucket of of member the um the one we pay all the account payable out of. The only the decommissioning fees go into the individual. Borrego accounts that are based on each project, but these I believe because we're going to then turn around and give them um, <coughs> pay places. Yeah, it revolves right out. Right, so it is in the revolving as far as I'm. All right, but I thought there'll be money left over, and I thought that money that was left over had to be assigned to a particular project, not just a general money bucket. But let's take it up with the accountant. Okay, because I don't know. Uh, the answer to that. All right, and then the other thing is Borrego wrote a letter about the fact that they're. They've sold their project, mm -hmm. and they're um, it should be in there. moving. Yeah, it's right here. They're they're. Uh, I guess the word, my word, would be reassigning the surety money to the new owner. And I want to go over that with the accountant too. Tom, um, excuse me. Before we do that, can you go? Can we back up for a minute? Sure. The laws and training opportunities. What was that? Training on and when? It was open meeting law, September something. In Orange. In Orange, Massachusetts, put on by the AGO. If you go to the AGO's office, or OAG, <coughs> I guess, Office of the Attorney General mm -hmm. website, these training sessions come up. There's one in Worcester, there's one in Orange, there's, they're around the state. And uh, it's, a, it's a thing you can do by web. Or mm -hmm. you can show up in person like a classroom. Excellent. Thank you. I can give you a notice if you want to walk back over to my office with me. I can give you the uh, notice that I have on my board. That gives you the directions and the times and dates. I'm pretty okay. sure you emailed it to everybody, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, thought so. Oh. Yeah, you might have a new email. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so can you get in? You yeah. didn't get your email? I didn't. <laughs> well, Tom has sent me in some email, and I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. Don't worry. But... I have not looked at my planning board website. That's the where, Gmail. That's where yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Come with me after, and I'll get you a copy, okay. and then and we can. Can I see those slides again? I got one quick question on these too. Okay. And I promise it won't be my last question. Tom. All right, I got slides for everybody. Do we have each? These are bullets. Uh, yeah, they're open meeting law, public records law, conflict of interest law. Where do I find this? Where do we find these? All right. Well, if you, if you actually, uh, if you actually go to the website and say MA, Massachusetts, yep. OML, open meeting law, mm -hmm. phew, come right up. 
Okay. And I'm pretty sure that that's what will also happen. Okay. The public records law is actually on the town website because it describes how you would request public records. Okay. And it has a background document to that. It has the uh, public records law. Mm -hmm. There's a whole family of laws, I don't include, it's called retention laws. What you gotta keep, what you can throw away, you know. And um, they're also listed by name and maybe law number, you know, like 43A okay. or whatever it is, in the yeah, charter, the town, a, the town charter. A, there's a few here that I wanna check on. Yeah. You can give that back to Patty and I'll, I'll hand out these back. copies. Um, this is the open meeting law that you were just referencing. I googled exactly, oh, what, exactly thank what you. Said. So this pops up and you can see all the videos in uh, content order. They're all about 10 minutes long. Very good. Thank you. Um, we have to go back to the minutes. Well, where am I now? Yeah. Do we have the uh, August 20 minutes or no? Okay. If you get them, um, draft them up, put them to me, I'll work on them for you and give them back. Okay. And no, I'm serious. I don't mind doing them at all. Um, I covered de decommissioning surety. I'm going to have to go with you to, is it N Nance? Lori, for the accounting for? No, for the surety money. I believe the surety money is maintained by the treasurer. I'd have to look into N that. Nason? Nason. Sandy. Sandy Nason. Yeah. It's in a, it's in a account somewhere. You may. We'll do it. Okay. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, and uh, over the last two meetings, or three meetings, we did some assigning of people to different spots. And I tried to make up a little table. I think we just need to go down and review it and vote for who's, who goes where. Um, Craig Boissonneau is our representative to the select board. And I think we voted him into that position on June 20th. And that showed up in a meeting minute. Mm -hmm. right. Then I was asked to work with Ryan on hiring the new clerk. And that showed up in a meeting minute on July 5th. But these other ones I can't find. And I think we ought to uh, just vote them. You know? Okay. Bill, you were going to. Excuse well, me. Actually, I got voted in at the meeting with Tom to do that one. Yeah. At that one meeting. Now, I reached out to uh, Tom, and he wasn't able to help me out at all. Um, Brad Cole. Oh, okay. okay. So that's when we talked to the last meeting. I couldn't get any information. So, and I can't get into the office because I'm not available when it's open. And that's where all the um, information is. Well, I think we can get you, we can solve that. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, you around tomorrow? Uh, no. Because neither am I. <laughs> I'm available <laughs> next. <laughs> Next week. All right. Well, let's start next week. Okay. Give me a buzz or see me in the on the common and and, and uh, okay. We'll come over here and sounds good. Do it on a day when the door is open. We'll go through the uh, Patty knows where all the bones are buried over there and, right. and uh, general areas. <laughs> I thought we voted <laughs> on so all these on the same night though. I thought we did too, but I can't find them in the meeting minutes. Ryan suggested that we Thank vote you. them. Okay. Now I don't care if we vote them all. At once and just say this is charts accepted. I mean, let's motion make sure that everybody's chart and keep everybody. Well, let's go through it. Yeah. Let's go through well, and see yeah, if you yeah, agree yeah, with it. I agree with that. <laughs> Homans, you have the pits. Wasano had the roads and the driveways and the. There's some kind of a tree law. Yeah. I was on economic development. Bailey had um, noise. I got my noise stuff right and here. And all right. There's a CPC rep. Vince was it. And I thought I'd step in there. I'm not, I don't have to. Anybody else want it? They're welcome to it. They only meet about four times a year, I think. But I think it's important. And then everybody's on the affordable housing. That's an ad hoc committee. Um, and we haven't met in a long time, and I'm not sure we'll meet right away anyway. So take a motion on it if you want to do it this way. 
I make a motion that we <coughs> that we do what? <laughs> that we accept. That we accept it. Well, so my previous assignment? motion was I, I made a motion that we'll we'll keep the assignments as stipulated in this chart. Okay. That sounds good. Seconded. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Now All I right. got another question. Do we have a quorum? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're a five-member board. The three of us are. Is that a quorum? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Kendall, do you need more? Um, do you want the history of the noise stuff that I have? I have a small stack of stuff that Vin and I pulled. So do of you want what? me to make a noise ordinance oh, yes. stuff? Do you want to make a copy of that for you? That'd be great. Thank help. you. Then some reports were due. Bill, you just gave us a gravel report. Um, but you did visit it, didn't you? Once. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I've been up there a number of times over the years, over the last 35 years. But well, we need a current report. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing's changed from many years. There's the one report, the um, Marinelli pits up there, and there's a lot of tonnage of uh, concrete waste that verbally was, I was told by Mr. Bracco that was brought from Worcester and dumped on the property, which was allowed at that time. And not, it was supposed to be something that was supposed Ooh, to be done. I don't think it was allowed. So no, but he said allowed. there's no, no information in the office on the permits that he knew of that could be found. And there was also no nothing in the office to, to show that they were allowed to do it. So I think the first. During, during the. Uh, they came in for a permit and we went through quite a process with their engineer and their owners and, and uh, they admitted it, admitted to it being there and they said it was their responsibility to dispose of it. Okay. And uh, is that a writing? We may have because well, we I found the whole thing. I got them on like videotape. Oh, okay. Right oh, all right. Yeah. Do you remember well, when that was? Because it may be in the minutes. Well, I can find it. Uh, okay. Because they revisited the permit again in 2012. Do you think it was that long ago? No, it was the it was the permit that we ultimately rejected. Okay, we 2017. Said, yeah, it was a denied application. Is okay. really what it was. It wasn't a permit. We may have it, Bill. Okay, we can good. Go do and look. something to start with. Okay. Yeah, they ad they admitted to the 350 tons or whatever it was, and and said they would take responsibility for removing it. And. Uh, There's an issue with the gate and access and all kinds of things going on, but um, I guess we need a report, not just of that, but of the whole site. Right, right. Because they don't, they don't have a fence up or anything. Nobody does out there. Yeah, really steep cliffs. People yeah, get hurt. Yeah, it's unsafe out there. Yeah. And, uh, all right. So, um, noise report. I have. <coughs> Downloaded this. This is the state of Massachusetts. State of Massachusetts um, dangerous noise really levels. Close. Are these are these numbers in here the dangerous level? It it says up here that in general, the decibel it says anything above eighty five decibels will cause hearing loss, and they give a list of what series of items yeah, and then they give you the um, general <coughs> pro the general laws on, on the on the second third page second third and fourth fifth page sorry I laughed but I saw baby crying 110 <laughs> 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 yeah I thought that was pretty interesting What's this now? Noise ordinance? Boston's noise ordinance? Yeah, this this has come out of Boston, Massachusetts. Well, why don't we why don't we accept this as a draft and read it and uh, discuss it in more detail next yep. next time? And what I want to do is get a copy that of the information that you have. The ones that I pulled for Ben were um, in right to farm areas. It mm -hmm. has a little bit more since we're right to farm. There may be more farm equipment and things like that. So that's why I focused on those. But that's what I'll give that's you. That's good. Whatever you've got. The reason this came, comes to the planning board for an issue to take care of is because of what? Is it part of uh, the regulations in, in the planning board that I haven't read yet? Or? Oftentimes, noise is a zoning bylaw. So I know uh, in law enforcement, they were tasked over the years to do that, and they went to the Board of Health, 
um, and they were tasked with that. They used to have it. And is there one? I think. Yes, it was. I mean, is there one now? I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I'm new to the board of health, so I'm just saying out there. Is this something new for the planning board, or is this something? Yeah, we don't have one. Yeah. This okay. Is, and I might just. Be, I that's why I volunteered for this because I have some morons <laughs> that are no, flying no. up and down my street on motorcycles, mm -hmm. and I've gone out there with. Um, no, you're being recorded, sir. I don't care. <laughs> I've gone out there with my firearms showing slow them down, stop them, explain that there are kids across the street, that we don't need you, these kids run out in front of you, you're going to hit them, we don't need the noise, and uh, they were very good for about a month, and then they got back at it again. There's been a lot of complaints and problems over the years with uh, the neighbors and families getting into problems with four-wheelers and motorcycles and when they have the horses and other animals on the property it, where it ends up going into district court and nobody does anything for it. It ends up just nothing happens. So it is a big problem. It is, it is a problem. Sometimes you have to go uh, about at night and take care of these things. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you're John. on TV. I, that's, that's fine. <laughs> I don't believe I'm saying anything well, I illegal. Think you, I mean, yeah, no. But <laughs> let's, uh, let's read it as a draft. I'm not sure the planning board will end up with it or if it goes to the it, Board of Health. Or, local, if somebody's already got it done, right. we're not interested in doing it over. Right, here. right. And but uh, I think the Board of Health a few years ago got involved with that and they had regulations and I'll have to look into that just to make sure. And I will. I'll check into that. Uh, Todd, uh, from a planning point of view, usually noise ordinances are put into place with regards to the uses of a certain parcel of property. Think like a, a concert venue okay. or a restaurant that has a built-in band bandstand platform, okay. something like that. That makes it part of the zoning, though. Exactly. That goes okay. into the use of a structure, which puts it under the purview of the residents. Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Helps out. Craig Lassano had streets and driveway permits and scenic roads and whatnot, because he's always driving yeah, around looking at them. So uh, we await his report. Um, we shouldn't have to wait till the next meeting. He can, he can bring it in electronically if he, if he has it available. So now it's uh, just about 7 o'clock, and we've got some uh, a new person we'd like to introduce, Todd Miller. Did I get that correct? Yes. It's Todd Miller. One syllable, it's not all that. <laughs> Miller? Yes. Oh, Todd is. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all the Miller jokes, you guys. All of them. I do have Come on up. Todd is the um, regional five town, the same as our, our yeah, school system know. towns, uh, regional planner. And he's with us for, I hope, a long time, but this first year it was paid for by a grant, I believe. This is true. That was uh, championed by the QEMP, Quabbin mm -hmm. Educational Municipal Partnership. Municipal Partnership. Educational Municipal Partnership, yeah. yeah. It started off as a task force for the reuse of buildings, and they've just kind of metamorphosized, metamorphosized into this. And I think uh, Ryan, of course, was also instrumental in, in uh, roping you into this and setting, <laughs> setting some goals and whatnot. <laughs> this is true. And uh, Ryan thought it would be a good idea if you met us and, yeah. and had a little time with us. We, we have just about an hour budgeted. Sure. So if you want to take some time, and then we can take some time or have a free-for-all. I'm not sure how you want um, to do it. That so sounds good, the first time. If you wouldn't mind. The, um, when we met as Please. a region, we've set up this idea of, of branding the, the Quabbin region to allow it to become a place uh, where economic growth is viable, understanding that the five towns are, are different and all have different needs. So we met with the, with the goal of um, hiring someone, as you, as you, as you put it, and now we need to task Todd with what he's going to do to help us. Yep. So Hubbardson gets about 20% of that, that piece in his time. And uh, the grant's only for a year so far. We're hoping that it's fruitful enough to be something we invest in in the future. But we really want, and we did during the interview process, to maximize this time. Uh, it's not free money, but it is grant money to try and, try and brand this region and increase our economic development viability. But... Um, so I just want to go over what what I told Todd that I'd like to see in terms of, of my office or from the executive office. But I also told him that each town is unique and it's important he comes and he hears from the planning board as 
to, as to what uh, the planning vision is, what Hubberson is, so that, and you're going to see he's very ambitious with his ideas. I just want to make sure that they're integrated uh, with yours and the select boards and the communities so that everybody's on the same page and this can be as productive as possible. So the, um, the things that, that I have put in place for Todd, which he said he could accomplish quickly, which yeah. uh, I've already I begun work on the five year. <laughs> I was impressed by is our website has a section developed to economic development that has, is undeveloped, ironically. So we want him <laughs> to develop that and uh, give us a presence in, in the region and for people that are looking to invest in our community. Uh, revamp the Economic Development Committee, which Tom brought up earlier, who's been appointed to by your by your board. We want to make sure that all the boards are appointing their members and appointing the at-large members so we can have a, a viable council that, that's helping us with economic development. It's going to create a, and using existing ones, create a business list and ask businesses and meet with businesses to talk about how they can, um, how we can better serve them, right? Because I think the basis of our economic development should be to make sure that our current and existing businesses have everything they need so that newer businesses know businesses will be supported when they come here. So he's going to uh, come up with that. Start the basis of a welcome um, packet or committee so that anybody who's coming in can understand the permitting processes, what we're doing to streamline those things, and to have sort of a liaison to help them with any sticky points in economic development in the community. And then finally, develop people have seen is my favorite is some type of long-term or five-year plan for for economic development so it's pretty I thought it was an ambitious agenda he told me it would take him like two weeks so yeah I've already begun work on the yeah, five you got like two days left and I wanted him to uh, meet you <laughs> and then uh, and obviously you would uh, start by telling him who you are and, and what you've done and how we can consolidate current and existing plans because there's no need to reinvent the wheel when a lot of it exists duplicate efforts from there <laughs> I guess I can start introducing myself. Please. Um, obviously, I'm Todd Miller. Uh, I went to elementary school in Ocam, went to Quabbin for middle and high school. I left here, got myself trained, went to college, got qualified as a city as a city and town planner. So this is a very personal endeavor for me. This is home. So it's, it's important that you guys know exactly where my loyalty lies and where my training is. Um, I worked previously both for the town of Franklin, which is a, ironically a, a community, a city of 33,250 people, which is just a smidge over this five towns cumulative total. Um, so it's the sort of work that I'm used to dealing with at the workload I'm used to dealing with. Um, I've got an initial broad strokes plan here. I've already begun work on the five to seven year economic development plan. Um, it's, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Like we heard from the, uh, the finance committee, over 90% of all of the five towns get our all of our resources via tax, via real estate tax levy. And we can't ignore that elephant in the room when we're talking about economic development. So we can't talk economic development without talking about the folks that live here and the real estate issues that we got to deal with. Notab noticeably between the five, Go ahead. between the five, um, after the, the recession of 08, that's when we saw a really large population hit. And we've continued to leak some just through general attrition that you get every year. Um, that's a good place that we need to stop the bleeding first. By population hit, you mean decrease? Exactly. Sorry to be unclear, but you're absolutely right. Um, the entire region saw a similar uh, downward trend after 08 especially. Uh, it's kind of leveled off after 08, but it's still, we're, we're bleeding people every year. And that's the community of customers that we need to retain in order to build that infrastructure that supports a business community. So that's the first step that we need to do. You, um, I've got some broad plans here, but I've also been speaking with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Rural Development Office in Holden, ironically. Um, also been speaking with FHA and the VA, and the VA Home Loans Division. And I was thinking uh, just off the bat of trying to market ourselves to the kind of demographic that is most desirable to us. Those that ha want to buy and live in a place for a long time, perhaps raise a family but don't have kids yet, because we would like them to have a small, as small a family as possible, maybe two or three folks, so that way we don't overburden our, our school system at the time. So we need to think about this pretty smartly and make sure that the folks that we're attracting are the folks that will do us the most good and hopefully be reciprocal on their end too. Um, if you like, I can hand these out here. Sure. Um, I've got some. I've got five, so I got a couple of extras if anyone wants one. Can you, Thank at you. some point, give it to Patty electronically? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Wow. No, it's um, 
if you, if you want me to. Thank you. Like I said, this is broad stroke stuff. Most of it is common sense. There's nothing overly academic or jargony. Uh, a lot of it's just common sense. Oh, yeah, sure. Like I said, I only have five. I'll tell you, where did you say you live? I live in Barrie currently. In Barrie? Yeah, I live in Barrie on South Street. Um, right I, the street from the school. Yeah, I'm not that far. I'm at the bottom of the hill. I'm on 1619, <laughs> the other end. But uh, I, I've lived in New Braintree on uh, Millstone Road. I've lived two places in Barrie. I, I grew up in Oakham on Spencer Road. This this entire, the only town, ironically, I've never lived in is Hubberston. It's the only one. Why so why didn't you live there? I don't know. <laughs> Probably because I was like nine years old. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Um, but we can either walk through this or you guys can peruse this on your own time. Like I said, it's not overly jargony. I stayed away from a lot of the shop talk that is kind of only restricted to those in my discipline. But you'll see that it's really common sense stuff. Mm -hmm. um, aside from getting the real estate issues situated and trying to stave off the bleeding as far as population, after that's done, uh, well, we can do these simultaneously. We can start working on developing the entire Quabbin region as a brand because the issues and challenges that all five of these, these towns face, every single one of these towns is unique, but the challenges they face are shared in the sense that as a region, we're either going to sink or swim together. That means we need to show some solidarity, work in good faith with each other, not that we already don't, but we need to cooperate if we're going to make it work and if we're gonna survive and pass this town off in a good condition to the next generation. So we need to start thinking beyond five years out. I would like to see five or seven years, if we could do a five to seven year plan, uh, in the sense that um, if you measure the lateral growth outside of Worcester, which has <coughs> increasingly begun to get very, very expensive, it started to spill over into Holden, which was already expensive, but also to Rutland, which just as just recently, as of two or three weeks ago, they hired a full-time planner on staff just to, to manage the growth that they're <coughs> experiencing. Um, their land prices have been going up pretty sharply in the past three or four years, and there's, they're going to be slowing down that pace of development, whether they put a, a, a cap on building permits, whatever they decide to do, they haven't, the new planner hasn't decided what he wants to recommend yet. But that's going to spill over to the towns that adjut uh, Rutland which will be, of course, OCAM, and those folks are in our area. So give it three or four years, maybe five, Rutland will have all the development that they have a taste for, and then their folks are just gonna continue driving until they qualify for the mortgage they like. At that point, it very much becomes our business. And we should start laying the groundwork for it now, because it's only a matter of time, and the writing's been on the wall, we just need to read it and adapt accordingly. Um, so we can go over this real quick. Um, the first thing I would like to see us do is that we, after we uh, get everything acquainted, get a quick five to seven year plan kind of formulated in our heads, we should reach out to some of those local lenders. We should reach out to the Rural Development Office that we have in Holden. Local the US lenders? Uh, local banks, lenders, oh. whoever provides mortgages in the area. So Spencer Savings Bank, all the local banks, uh, uh, all the credit unions that provide mortgages, all of them. And we should market our area as a great place to live and work. Once we attract folks that are the right demographic, we can get some new people coming in. That provides the customer base that they, we can then you know, put all of our economic de development efforts on top of. We need to create this area as a brand and market it as such, because this is a fantastic place to live. I grew up here. People would be darn lucky to grow up here with a family. They really would. And we need to shop this as a place that is one, affordable to live in, safe and comfortable to live in, which it already is, and it's beautiful to live in, which it already is. Folks just need to know about it. And once we get some folks in from that angle, I think the rest of it will start to kind of, the engine will start running on its own. Once we have a, a population large enough to support businesses, the business community will see us as an untapped market. They'll come in with very little exertion on our end, if that makes sense. Um, I'd love to get other ideas if from everyone else. I'd like this to be a, a consensus, collaborative type of approach. But um, that's the first thing I, I would like to see happen first. In that first chapter, that's the only thing I could possibly add to it, I think, is um, it was a standing in Worcester looking out kind of mm -hmm. vision. There is another um, road, uh, Route 2, yep. uh, the Westminster mm -hmm. uh, Ashburnham, that corridor, uh, yeah. corridor yeah. that's coming, another yeah. 
a, a different army is coming from that direction. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had folks coming down from the north, too. Well, I met a young lady Marvel last ministry. night that uh, used to live in Paxton yep. that did a lot of research, and her and her husband retired, and they moved to town. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear her ideas of why she did that. Yeah. Um, and she's sitting right there. <laughs> oh, um, hi. Just Speaking of 122, hi. Um, <laughs> To hear, you know, maybe bring those ideas and those thoughts of why you why you picked that pick yeah. this town. That's I'd love to hear that if you share it with us. Uh, well, that's well, all we got. Sure. All right. I hate to put you on the spot, um, but yeah, I'd love quick. to hear it. Well, I mean, with the retirement plan, mm -hmm. I was a lawyer in the city of Worcester. My husband was professor at Clark. Okay. We lived at Pet and Paxton for 26 years, 25 years. Lived in a pretty, you know, 1,800 square foot ranch, um, and we decided we could, you know, it was always convenient and we were very busy, right? But it really wasn't where we wanted to retire so much, although our church is there and I love Paxton. I've served yeah, a lot I of love them. Paxton. So it was sort of a combination of for the same $350,000 to buy a much better house. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more country. We have a dog. We're big hikers. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it was more, it was more peaceful, more rural, more. And, uh, you know, it was that far. I mean, you're you're actually your, your situation is outlined in this paper that I have here. Oh, retirees, I, good retiree spot. I actually I called it uh, I called it bookend targeting. You're targeting folks that are either retiring or those that are looking to buy a starter home and begin a family. So right. th that's the the ideal in my mind would be folks that are in their early to mid 30s, have one kid, maybe two, maybe six to eight years old. Uh, that will but doesn't that put a big burden on the school system? That's why I'm only picking two, because I don't want to have us recommend only having three people, because then we'd have a net loss of kids, and we need to get some folks into the school system, but not too many. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a line we have to walk. We want to make sure that the school system is maintained as close to its ideal levels as possible, but not to overburden it. So we don't want to have a bunch of McMansions with eight kids coming in. That would right. just be too much of a shock too soon. And then other people, they voice their opinions the same. There's no work close to here. Huh. So a lot of folks that moved from the East 20 years ago here when we were really booming back in that era, mm -hmm. a lot of homes were built. Yeah. Um, it was very cheap for them, but they had to spend two and a half hours on Route 2 yeah. to get into Boston with the heavy traffic and because yeah. there's not a lot of work around here. Yeah, that was during the 90s boom. Like you find that. All, it's like a uniform staple really? all across the country. Okay. If you look at the the units built per year, no matter I could, I could probably take a, a running bet on any zip code. You'll see a bump mm -hmm. in the ninety two to ninety eight times oh. like time slot slot. It's yeah, just yeah. it's like a running standard. It's a joke among all the housing planners. But um, that's the kind of speed bump that it, it's always noticeable. But there's not much we can do about our location. Uh, however, it's a good thing that uh, Worcester is booming in the way that it is. Marlboro has already developed itself remarkably mm -hmm. in the past 15 years. And there are folks, even Lemonster, Fitchburg, those twin cities are starting to clean up and get a little bit more, uh, more life breeds into them. Those folks that live and work in any of those areas I mentioned, they would view areas like, like ours if they wanted to buy something and live there in Mesa Family. And that's something that we can position ourselves as part of the market to, to fulfill. So that's something worth doing. I have a question for yes. Alice. Isn't it true also, Alice, that you um, were involved in the wave of people that entered the Quabbin, is it, what, what is it? Wachusett mm -hmm. Regional School District? Right. Um, well, you were, the, you were the head of the school committee, I think. I was head of the school committee. Our problem was, you know, we have five towns too. Two towns, Princeton, Paxton were K through eight, and then and they were each ten percent members. It was a twenty percent twenty member board, huge board because it was population distributed. Uh, but our our big problem was when they consult we it, we always had a regional high school, and then they regionalized the elementary schools too, mm -hmm. okay. and they pulled in Rutland, which <laughs> was trying to lift Rutland up um, at the time. So anyway, there were a lot of imbalances. There were a lot of state formula problems as you're debating. Yep. And, uh, and then we had the building the high school because it didn't have any or, or rehab it yeah. because of its accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it was just hard because there were two-thirds votes in each town. And, I mean, it's we eventually, it, it was brutal. It was yeah. like six votes. And we finally got it through. Um, so, anyway, that's a little bit. Of, and we did finally did a rehab building. Mm -hmm. um, and I do know that the town would 
the, the uh, state building people help a lot. So they said, do it now and you'll get 64% paid by the state. Do it next year and you'll get 50 or something. Yeah, yeah. so there was an incentive from the state. And the other thing is you could only look in demographics to how much you could build for your school. You could only look 10 years out. Mm -hmm. So we did know we were looking at this huge bubble in the high school. It would peak out in 2010 and 11. And then it would drop back. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about demographics oh, and yeah. how you do that. It's, it's really... But uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to write anything that has some sort of scope to it when you're in the middle of a census year, in the sense that we have ACS estimates that are estimates, but they're not as reliable as census data is, and we don't get one of those until 2020. So that's the kind of challenge. I've had to base a lot of the writing I've done just from ACS and American Community Survey estimates, which are a heck of a lot better than nothing, but they're not nearly as rock-solid reliable as census data is, nor commonly, you know, ACS data is usually taken into account, but not with the same gravity that a full census would be. We had, I know we had to put in a report. And the other thing that was interesting to me was this same school had a population that was almost twice as big during, you know, the 60s. Yeah. But because of the lab space requirements and SPED requirements, I mean, you just name it, it was, it was woefully inadequate for the half population we had in there. It is. I, um, okay. Just coming up, oh, one second. Just coming up today, that QEMP, the quality and all that, there's a report that just came out today that um, that outlines all of the, the regional school systems and how they can share and adapt to buildings. All the recommendations from, all the recommendations from CMRPC were just uh, released as of four or five hours ago. Wow. So that's, that's going to be something that's very much worth looking into. The report's 237 pages long, so I regret to inform you I didn't print that. <laughs> Um, if you like, I can make sure that that's available to anyone who'd like it. Uh, it's it's actually really fascinating. Well, isn't it posted on the QEMP site? Uh, is yes, a site? it is. Yeah, it's on there. It's got to be posted up there. Yeah. Um, if you're on the QEMP uh, mailing list, it's already been disseminated with a link to where you can get yeah. the PDF. There's a meeting coming up for um, yeah. a week from today. Right. Yeah. If anybody wants to do information. There's one. Um, there's actually two. There's one that's the uh, the kickoff for the action plan which is a week from today in the administrative building of Quabbin Regional Senior High School. And there's also one the day after that uh, for folks that couldn't make the first one. Which sure. It's, it's going to be really good. Well, you've lost a significant number of uh, students mm -hmm. at yeah. Quabbin uh, yep. over, over the last eight years, I think, maybe a thousand students declined. Yeah, it, and it that's is projected to, to continue. Yeah, it's it's going to um, follow a, a parallel to our, uh, our overall population after 08. Uh, folks that were, after the recession hit, a lot of folks were forced to leave the area, and we're still kind of sore from that, and folks have been leaving that way because of it. Do you, are you aware that we have a rate of development bylaw here mm -hmm. that, uh, that prohibits building yeah. more than so more many than. units a year? Yeah, and that's, I mean, these are regulatory issues that the planning board work is going to have to address in order to meet some of the goals that is outlined here to align with the strategy and there's no real way around the fact that we're going to have to have increased development. Um, but the trick, the, the strategy is to make sure, like you've heard before, that it's compatible to the character of the town. You don't want to have a huge McMansion subdivision sort of thing coming into town because it really will tear at the fabric of what makes this area this area. And we need to make sure that the spirit of Harveston, Hardwick, New Braintree, Barry, Oakham is maintained. Um, but we need to find a line because we can't keep out on the same track that we've been keeping on because we're just keeping our head just above water by a little bit. We're going to have to do more. And businesses won't come here out of charity. They need folks to sell to. And we need to have a customer base and the neighbor base to, to sustain okay. them. Ryan, did you have a question or did, a comment? did. So a couple of things that, that Todd pulled out um, for, this, for this board's consideration and why, why we're having this discussion is the idea of setting up our community for the future. So uh, some of the things we'll talk about with the select board and other investments we made are in our infrastructure. So the town center project, the uh, Route 68 north and south, uh, some of the investments in Chapter 90 we've made, those are all investments that are going to help create a place where people want to come. But there are other natural assets here in other community surveys and other reports that, that this board has done and initiated are indicating that our greatest strengths are open space, um, the, the, some of the state-owned land, 
and the idea that people like rural, yeah. that live in rural America. So we would really like to and, and are going to work on marketing that land, that open space land as a place to come yep. and integrate it with, and, and you'll hear shades of Katie Young and Todd, the idea <laughs> that you want to make Hubberson a place to come. So um, not just making our special events, those fun videos you put on Facebook, but as a way to draw people to the community. So, um, and what I don't want him to do, what I don't want Todd to do, I'm not trying to talk about you in the third person, but <laughs> is to run off with a plan that doesn't match uh, existing plans, what's already been done for work, and the idea that you, you, can, you can make a community out of people who work remotely or mm -hmm. who don't necessarily travel, right? That might be coming in the next 20, 30 years. So how do we position Harberston to take advantage of all of those things it is what uh, this board and others are going to have to help him weigh in on so that we can combine existing efforts and come up with one future, one plan, one solid drive. It's already Absolutely. here. Remotely, um, it's really grown. It's, it's Overwhelmingly, the number of, by number of businesses, their home businesses, mm -hmm. overwhelming. If you, um, if you look at the business list that, we, that you provided to me, a large portion of those have the same address both for the owner and yeah. for their official address. Yeah. And most of those are service-based. I think we had over 350 home businesses yep. when I pulled the list mm -hmm. back in 2005. Oh. Well, what's available? Of what's yeah. available for, for sale? You're talking inventory? I gave, I gave him the business 2000. Oh, okay. Business okay. List, I, I provided the 2017 17 It's like business October list. 17. Okay. And they're the, they're the business lists that when you start a business, you go to the town clerk and get a business certificate. A cer certificate, which is different than a business. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the the business is uh, the the permitting and the business process is something else. But mm -hmm. that it's a good start. I, yeah. uh, we try to. It's it's one a thing we want to do is. is give you everything that already exists, so you don't have to spend time finding it. Please. And and mm -hmm. it may even be helpful. Okay. I'm I'm Maybe. just putting it out. I'm very much a quantitative, measurable data person. Uh, I've lived here long enough. I know the qualitative. This is my home. Mm -hmm. The quantitative, that's my stronger suit. I'm Maybe very good with math and statistics. Anything that we can measure, that's something I like having an even metric to use for. Ed? Uh, the planning board is currently working on a, a new master plan. Would any of your work interface with uh, something like that? Potentially. Um, I'm willing to yes. overlap with them a bit. And uh, maybe something I'm working on might be a chapter in a master plan or something like that where they could draw inspiration from it, re whatever really works for them. I worked on uh, the Town of Franklin's master plan, um, and we, we I drafted that along with uh, my mentor there. So I've, I've got quite a bit of experience working on that. I, I would think, well, our master plan process was do the survey yep. and, and review the old master plan and <laughs> formulate a new master plan. <laughs> and we put together a few chapters, and one of them was the economic development chapter. Yep. Um, and we used uh, Massachusetts Regional Planning. MRPC, yes. And um, John Hume, you yep. might know him, know lives in Holden, yep. um, the Templeton. Yep. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job. And uh, you should get that. And I believe if, if you have any trouble at all, I'll just send it to you. Okay. I, I have it somewhere. Oh, and um, I, I can't believe that, uh, in answer, kind of in answer to that question, I can't believe that the master plan we have done and the master plan that you might go off that has a slightly different um, lens on it. It looks at all five towns mm -hmm. instead of just Hubbardston. But yeah. they have to harmonize. If, if they're not um, in tune with each other, then we'll have conflicts and, and it won't it won't work. Yeah, absolutely. So um, um, I've already been I've already begun work on that. Um, uh, just to get the bare bones and everything else, this, the, ma the standard framework. We can put all everything else on that together, like I said, in concert and consensus with each other. Um, even still, it's the sort of thing that you're right. All these things need to be in tune because if it's dissonant in any one part, it could throw off the whole thing. Um, and we really need to make sure that there's a lot of communication between different boards, that you guys know more or less what's going on with Barry's planning board, more or less that you yeah, know at least a little bit about what's going on with Hardwick. Just, you don't have to be in the weeds of it, but just no. knowing more or less what's gonna come down the pipeline so we can make sure all of our decisions are taken into account so there's no duplication of efforts or we're not competing with each other unnecessarily. 
You yes. probably know this, but I'm going to announce it anyway. Uh, you said Rutland has hired a full-time mm. planner. They have. Well, some of that is um, because of the oh my goodness factor. Yeah. Uh, they they relaxed their laws mm. in 07 because well no one's going to build any houses anyway, <laughs> and uh, and That's they relaxed them and now they have they're faced with 400 building permits yep. already buildable. Mm. They can't Where change them. Uh, they're they're in. Mm -hmm. They're over a period of time. I think it's six years. Yeah. But um, that's going to be a wave. If, if there's two kids in each house, that's uh, that's, that's two schools kids. full of people. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that they're in. That overflow, or that that pressure, will undoubtedly affect public safety. It it will. That's part of the five to seven years that I was mentioning. <coughs> that Might spillover is going to hit us laterally. It's it's not an if. It's a matter of when. And it's not a matter of, I don't want it to, it's a matter of, well, it's going to happen, but we can choose what iteration it takes. And I think that that's probably the wisest way to go about it, is making sure that the development happens on our terms, rather than just being a victim to the winds. You know? Okay. Where are we in your little... Oh, I, I haven't even really are been we, going off of it. Yeah, are we, <laughs> are we hitting the high points, though? Yeah, this, yeah, this is, like I uh, said, this is for your perusal after the fact, just to keep all the juices flowing. Um, like I said, nothing in here, like I mentioned, is overly jargonish. Um, it's it's pretty accessible, and uh, if you have any questions, oh, that reminds me, I want to make sure that all of you guys have my contact information, both online and offline. Like I pride myself, you can call me whenever you want. If you get out of work at nine o'clock, you can call me. Don't don't worry about it. Um, you can call me, email me whenever you like. I'll get back to you instantly or as soon as possible. Okay. During outside business hours, can you sweater. you want to give us your email address? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so the best one to get a hold of me at is Quabin, EDC Economic Development Coordinator, at gmail.com. Quabin, uh, what was it? I'm sorry. EDC Quabin e EDC. Quabin yep. EDC. Yep. At gmail. At gmail. Uh, I did have a hard. I did have an, a Hardwick email, but I chose to forego that. I didn't want it to look like I was playing favorites with anybody. Mm -hmm. I wanted just to be like the neutral face <coughs> of all five of us. Um, that will change when I get the website I'm working on set up. Those are that's still very much rough. That's easily six months down the road. That's the five town website. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be coming up with a five town website so folks that want to, you know, experience what these five towns are like. This would be kind of like a tourism sort of website. You can find out what each town has to offer, what little quirks they have in their identity that makes them different, but it also speaks to the overall Quabbin identity, which I think is going to be the main mechanism for getting folks to build or to move in. Um, you're, uh, you're, you're, you struck a little theme there before. You said affordable, yep. safe and comfortable, yep. and viewable. Yep. That, that's a, that's a pretty viewable. good theme. I, I, um, I'm I like confident that. in it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't address what some people in town think is the answer. Mm. Industrial development. Um, <sighs> that's, that's a... It, is there... Uh, is there any evidence that industrial development results in um, a, a, an improved quality of life for, you know, that's a broad term, but you, the it's general the uplift of all, of all people of all, living like there. The rising tide for all the boats? Uh, yeah. Um, that's something we can have Todd research. It's, it's, that's the thing. You can have an entire class on industrialization and the impacts and on livability in the region. Like I would well, livability is a good term. Yeah. Exactly, livability is it's a very it's a it's a legitimate term. Uh, think of uh, think of Motown. Think Detroit. Detroit would never have been Detroit if it weren't for all the industrialization that occurred in it. I've been However, to Detroit. Yeah, it, it cuts. That's that's a fire that cuts both ways. So let's uh, talk about Hoverston. So you yeah. said <laughs> um, the chapter of the Master Plan on Economic Development is something that we'll, we'll get to. Get it. What, what else should, should Todd know? Should he look at? Should he think about while he's uh, developing this plan and trying to coordinate the region, but specifically Hoverson, since it's the only one he didn't live in? Yeah, so you're going to have to live one. in it for a little while, yeah. at least a month or so. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but there is a, a vast amount of information that the last time we were together in this room, it was Mr. Lerner from the Finance Committee yep. had tapped into the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm and he had presented slides, and he, he did a really good um, 
door opening. You know, he pried open that door, and he said, I've, look yeah, at all this information. I've already <laughs> connected with him, and he's already offered to help analyze whatever data I come all up right. with. And we're both quantitative guys, so I, we're going to be working together. That's on good. That. Right. <coughs> awesome. I have some stuff also. I, I, I went into the same website because he referenced it. Yep. And uh, I didn't um, completely agree with his, his way of analyzing things because he chose things from zero population to, say, 5,000. Yeah. And... We're 4,600. Yeah, you're on the right-hand side of the yeah, curve, and, and, and you're counting folks so that representative. are representative. Yeah. So I, I chose a different selection. I went yeah. from our, our population to two-thirds of our population and then to one-and-a-half of our population. Okay. And then I dropped out um, towns that were like four square miles, yeah. you know, down on Route, Route 20, you, yeah. know, you know. And I, I got down to a smaller number of towns, about 12, mm -hmm. that are... Uh, focused on the northern Worcester County, Route 2 corridor, and yep. Worcester's, Worcester yep. North. Worcester's tertiary yeah. area. Yeah. And, um, and came up with an analysis of my own, I, which yep. I I think we don't have time tonight, but it, someday I'll, we'll... I'll, I'd like to have a copy of it. If yeah, you don't I, I can get it for yeah. you. And then that that Department of Revenue thing, what I did was I set them all up, all the towns, and I just went across by their Department of Revenue number, and, uh, and I highlighted Hubbardston. And then I went through each category, and they have things like um, uh, percentage of this gotten from that, you know, mm -hmm. or percent spent on this topic. Or, and I ranked Hubbardston from the top. In other words, if, if Hubbardston had a number of money, of dollars spent, how many towns above it spent more? Mm -hmm. Or how many towns spent more mm -hmm. than it, and how many towns spent less than it? So you have 12. And then Hubbardson gets a rating, like six is right in the middle. Yeah. Ten, Plus it, it uh, no, it was a small oh, amount spent. Okay, I got you. Okay. Because ten pe uh, nine towns spent more. Yeah. Nine out of 12 spent more. So okay. you're in the, like the 75th percentile. So you're scaling it to aim well. Yeah. And I went through it at that. And there's some, some areas where uh, for very small amounts of money, you could jump up the scale pretty good. Mm -hmm. And, and they were uh, in the quality of life region, you know, yeah. um, uh, culture and these kind of things that go along with, like, Katie's efforts to attract people. You know, uh, if we had more of these kind of things, maybe, you know, I don't know, concerts or whatever it is. But um, it, it kind of fit, and it came in for pretty small money yeah. because we spend such a small amount on it already. <laughs> <laughs> but... but that kind of an analysis was pretty interesting. And there's a billion categories mm -hmm. uh, of, of spending yeah. in the DOR money. I just don't want us to get so narrowly focused on just business or industrial development because for a town like ours, community development is just as much economic development as should we bring in X factory or should we well, incentivize Well, could we go what? forward on that presentation to, to about the uh, third slide, fourth slide? Let me I'm going to just skip through it, but... Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't give him a copy of this presentation. No, this is his. Yeah, th no. I, I just came in with these. I got... Um, go to the one that's cut in half, this one. <coughs> oh, right, right. That one. Mr. Lerner pointed out that, disregarding the, the legitimacy of the goal, he pointed out that to achieve North Brookfield's level of industrial revenue, which was higher on the scale yeah, than, than us, um, you'd need a almost five hundred thousand dollars, and that would come from an from a assessed value of thirty million. Yeah. And if you go one more slide forward, I looked at some Hubbardston examples. We've got two industries in town. With their assessed value at roughly 275, I'm going to say 300,000 okay. to make it easy. To get to 30 million, you need a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, and th the chances of getting a hundred new businesses that would come into town and build buildings and and whatnot are pretty slim. Mm -hmm. um, so flipping forward, what do you do? Here's Hubbardson's population. Note the 50 line. <laughs> and, and what we were talking about earlier you know, is a retirement target. So you flip forward one more, and I'm crashing through these. But here are two 
developments in town, Moosehorn and Madison. Um, the the four million nine and the nine million five are their assessed values. So you got twenty two units, forty four units. It's a no kids situation. Their taxes are two hundred nineteen thousand. That gets you half of what Mr. Lerner's target was. Mm -hmm. Now, it, well, in fairness to him, that wasn't a target. No, that was it, just, it's an just an example. Effort. Yeah, exactly. But there's a fifteen million dollar assessment. So you get fifteen million out of the thirty. Um, one more slide. I know, flip that. Uh, here are the solar systems we have in town. And in uh, industrial, de industrial assessments in 17, they came in at 8 million. But by 20, there'll be 15 million. There's the other 15 million. Mm -hmm. So there's 30 million that people are saying, oh my God, how can we do it? <laughs> it's in our hands. It is. It's, it's awesome. already here. It's also worth pointing out that solar developments, the panels that are coming down the pipeline as far as te technology, the ones that are coming down are completely translucent. So they look like panes of glass more than anything else. That's the sort of thing that will become increasingly common. By the time that we're really feeling the pinch population-wise, that's gonna be 10 or 12 years, all of the solar panels that we need will be as clear as the windows in your car or the windows in that well, services everything else. I'm just doing money. Oh, yeah. I don't care what they look like for now, <laughs> um, but my point is this, look at the dates. Mm -hmm. We started accumulating this half a million dollars back in 15, 16, 17. Where'd the money go? <laughs> you know, we, we cried for 30 million uh, evaluation yeah. that yields a half a million revenue. revenue. We, we were saying, oh, I've heard this like over and over again, say, I have more revenue, gotta have more revenue, gotta have more revenue, we're, we die for more revenue. <laughs> and uh, um, it's already kind of in our hands. How are we allocating it? And how are we reaping a benefit from it? Hmm. Shouldn't our, uh, what do they call those funds? Stabilization. stabilization fund. Yeah, Shouldn't our stabilization fund be overflowing with money? Uh, you know. So I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm seeing the revenue, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing the potential for more revenue. Oh, that's definitely a certainly a viable avenue, but especially with folks that that come from a farming agricultural background. I I deal with this a lot in Barrie. There are several families that own vast tracts of land that come from an agricultural background that sure as heck aren't going to be moving out of out of their house that's they're going to age well, they're land poor. yeah they're not going to, yeah but uh, they want to find a way to extract revenue from the land that they have but something that they can do in their advanced age something like renting out their areas for solar development is ideal for that they can rent out their land for solar development as a solar farm they don't have to exert physical effort into generating income from it and it doesn't damage the land that they sit on so after the farm isn't wanted anymore, they can break the farm down, the solar farm down, they can still hand the land off to their kids and no one's the worse for wear. Well, the, it's not it's not quite that easy because no. these things aren't for everybody. No, they're not. They're and, not. and they're um, gonna receive varying levels of acceptance. Yeah, exactly. But it's like telephone poles, exactly. you know? They're not very pretty, but they're all <laughs> over the place. But there's also and an <laughs> infrastructural <laughs> issue, whether or not the lines can take all the generation. Yeah, there's, there's, there's infrastructure lot, yeah. and whatnot. But my point was $30 million uh, value, assessed value and the half million dollars that flows from it is in our hands. Mm -hmm. It's here. Now, how can we do it again? You know, another over 55 community or another solar panel or something. Um, it seems like it's viable. And the thing I like about them both are what I call uh, unburdened revenue. In other words, if you build a McMansion and you put six people in it and two cars and, and yeah, the whole bit, fire, yeah, um, DPW. That, yeah. that revenue comes to the town, but then an awful lot of it flows back. In service, yep. Whereas in a solar system, there's no traffic, there's no, you know, no plowing driveways. Yeah. Uh, and the 55 plus communities that came out of our planning board zoning laws um, were such that they did their own stormwater systems, they did their own streets, they did their own uh, plowing, they, they maintained their own properties. Mm -hmm. All of this was unburdened 
<laughs> revenue. <coughs> and that's really, I think, key. It, it, there's also some other tangential benefits, too, in addition to that. Um, if you make these affordable units through a 40B count, it increases your account towards Afford the top. Uh, a chapter 40B, that's for affordable housing. Oh, um, oh, okay. And there's that 10% state mandated goal that um, folks are, communities are looking to reach that prevents a comprehensive permit from being placed in your community with little little input as far as the community goes. So for each of those 55 and over units that are designated affordable by the state, that ups your 10% count, which which kind of safeguards you from an unfriendly 40B comprehensive permit. We went down that trip mm -hmm. and we uh, did the evaluation on where we were on that percentage. Yeah. And we were very distant from it. Mo and a lot we, of folks are. We passed um, a, a regulations that um, will counter the invasion of a 40B mm. um, uh, and, and allow the town to um, slow that down so you don't get you don't get trampled by by that process. Part of what I was doing in Franklin was a good section of my job description was working with the housing authority and making sure that the units that we came in to keep us exactly or as near to 10% as possible. We're nowhere near. Yeah, most uh, most communities uh, are. Rural communities. We're getting off topic. So I'm just trying to focus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Todd, in, in particular, but the, so I'm here to serve as a steward and to try and help coordinate visions for the community, right? Wh whatever the community wants to do is, is mm -hmm. what I want to do. Um, it, I think a lot of this is true, but it has to be looked at as a diversified portfolio, right? So solar isn't good or bad, it just is. It has good sides and has downsides. Like uh, solar right now under the SMART program, the, uh, an average pilot, just rough numbers, is about a million and a half for the entirety of the 20 years. And then after 20 years, it drops off. So that revenue is really great for that 20 years, um, but then, then it ends. So you need something else to, to, to complement it in terms of a pilot. And, and same thing with the 55 plus communities are great. I mean, that's a, that's a ton of revenue. We'd love to have that type of development. Um, but they're not service free either. You still need ambulance, police, fire, and plowing. They're much less service demanding than a 40 house development. I understand. I understand. I'm partial to education right now, given where I am in my life. Well, I, I'm yeah. not against education. <laughs> no, that's fair. Not at all. In fact, what better way to fund it than to have people pay for the grown up kids? So, so the idea or what we're trying to establish is a way to, <laughs> I like that, is a, is a way to to make it all possible. Right? And that's what I want to feed him for information. What does the town want? What does the community want? What do we want it to look like in five to 10 years? Because that's the key. So we can, and, and have been debating this or that in the past, but we really got to look into mm -hmm. the future and say, what, what do we want Hubbardston to look like in 2030? Yeah. Um, right. 2023, which is only the five years The biggest thing people so. said in the survey, the last survey that was done, they want to keep the rural character the way yep. it is. And if you grew up here, you understand I that. I get it. Yeah. And I think that's foremost of you know, the whole process. I, I think that the emphasis on the compatible development, emphasis on the compatible, I think, is where we need to, that's where you guys come in. Right. Everything that comes in, it's up to you, for a large part, being the permit granting authority. Um, it's going to be up to you guys to determine what is copacetic with, with Hubbardston. Um, that said, we, we, as long as you guys keep in mind that growth is necessary and required, but it needs to take the form that, that keeps this town what it is. And those are not mutually exclusive, um, especially, like I mentioned, over 90% of our bills are paid by real estate. And we can't talk about economic development without thinking about the population loss and all the empty structures we have lying around. And those that are on the market that have been on the market for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just make sure that we look at this uh, with an open mind, keep an idea that we need all a suite of ideas. Any one particular issue isn't going to be the golden parachute. Right. That, that lifts us out or pre prevents us from falling. I don't know that our analogy, it, but uh, it's not going to be the single silver bullet that does it. Ed, did you have a question? Yeah, no, I was just wondering if uh, uh, there was a gentleman on our finance committee that did quite a oh, extensive yeah. report mm -hmm. on, on business trends and that. I didn't know whether you um, had. If it's the gentleman I'm thinking of, Josh. I already touched base with him. Josh Lerner. Josh. Yeah, yeah, Josh yeah, presented that at yeah. the at the uh, select board meeting yeah. August twentieth. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I've already met up with Mr. Lerner. Uh, he and I are going to collaborate on some uh, data crunching and boring math stuff. <laughs> but um, are there any other ideas, things that you wish that you could see that I could try to incorporate into some of these plans? I 
This town has a senior center that does paper mm -hmm. uh, complex, and it doesn't pass because it requires an override. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to attract people 55 and over, it isn't even the people 55 or over. It's the people 55 and over that are caring for the people mm -hmm. that are 80 and over that live with them. You know, I went through this. Everybody's gone through this. So, so I'd like to know if there's some kind of study with how much does having a, a good senior center, which you know has the, the meals, the yeah. uh, I'm not saying we have, we do have a senior program here, but it's not what a senior center yeah. would provide. It could be a lot and, more. And my feeling is that it provides <coughs> a lot to Holden, and and certainly the seniors do add. They have their problems. You know, they vote against the school levies. They do need more ambulance. They do need, but I don't think you can really move forward if you're going to appeal to the 55 and over, unless you do that. So I'd be interested in what uh, what research has been done on how much of an impact having a good senior center has, so it might be sold, yeah. and also if there isn't some way we can get it out of the override box, maybe through some FDA financing or you know, some 40 year financing or through something that could make it happen. That's the biggest fail, the way it failed in the community because people couldn't afford the tax increase to cover it, um, especially when everything was all in the same bucket. It was, it was a big tax increase for the population and that's, it was right. too much. But we yeah, shouldn't say therefore we can't do it. Oh and no, no everything's possible if you work at it. Yeah, figure out how to do that. Good planning. The first do, do away with prevailing wage and we can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, like, we're That's trying to stay away from story. <laughs> I don't think it would be that. But the first half of your question regarding the research, yeah. that's a really interesting question. I don't know. But I want to find out. The second half of the question, that goes in the public administration, which is not my wheelhouse. Okay. Um, but I'll talk to you about it. <laughs> well, on the other side of that coin, I know in Barry they have a really nice brand new uh, senior center over there. Right across the street from the VFW. Correct. I mean, right, yeah. right so down I the wonder, you know, would you being affiliated with all these other towns, maybe you could look at that to see that that really helped them. Quality EMP is looking at regionalizing a lot of these and mm -hmm. trying to have like a smart shrink strategy so mm -hmm. we don't overlap as a five town region. We don't duplicate efforts. The other problem that you got to look at though is a lot of folks, there was a gentleman tonight that lives down on Brigham Street know him very well but he had an accident out here because he's he shouldn't be driving yeah. so people we all going to face this problem for living here mm -hmm. we get older we're not going to be able to drive anymore yeah. you're really uh, stuck at your home yeah. unless you get the, the ride to for you know and we don't have that many in, in hardwick you have the mark program well we have it here too yeah. but there's not a lot of that oh so um, maybe it's worth expanding so that's a whole nother problem that's going to be kind of worked into the situation if you're going to you know it's going to keep people here and they're getting older Maybe we should look at a better process for that, too. I agree, because it's not even a matter of us keeping them here. Folks are choosing to age in place. That's something that, that's a, a wave we need to ride, or mm -hmm. we're going to get crushed underneath it. Correct. There's no way we can avoid that. So that's a question that we're going to have to find a way to answer. Tom. So I have one element yes. I wanted to address okay. with you, and that is, is I think, and I, I brought it up several times, and it seems, seems like uh, this area, where we're only 55 miles away from Boston area, mm -hmm. uh, I do see potential for tourism oh, yeah. as to whether or not there is something that is in your plans to potentially even look at that. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, is because we have some interesting communities around us, uh, very specifically in Princeton, Westminster, with the Mount Wachusett area. There's a lot of outdoor activities, which is becoming very, very popular. And people do not necessarily want to drive two, three hours up to Maine, to Vermont, or to Northern New Hampshire, where they can get some of the not only beauty, but you know, natural resources that we have here, which yeah. certainly opens up that opportunity from an economic perspective. Oh yeah, it's actually, uh, thank you for bringing that up because I completely uh, overlooked that. But in this is, a, is an entire section on uh, ecotourism and trying to be the, the Vermont that's so much closer. The folks that live in Middlesex County or folks that are in maybe even in the southern part of the Cape that want to get out and see the trees but they don't want to drive from, let's say Franklin, just because I'm familiar with it, they don't, want, they don't want to drive from Franklin all the way to Vermont. Right. That would be madness. But however, we can offer much of what Vermont does right here, and we're a heck of a lot closer. And it's the ancillary businesses that come around it that really promote the area and can pr provide economic development, and therefore, especially the, 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 the small businesses, which is really what we're trying to foster with 
for employment purposes, certainly an area I would want to, to, to address here. You're absolutely right. My OCHEM, I, I did one of these for every one of the participating communities. I'm going to be kind of making my rounds over the next couple of weeks. But uh, the section for OCHEM, which has um, the uh, camp Lake Dean campground, Pine Acres campground, mm -hmm. I was going to meet up with them and see if we can leverage their camping as something that would work for OCHEM. However, that's a good place to start from, but we can leverage those campgrounds. But while they're in the area, they can patron all the other businesses. They might be in OCHEM, but they can still patron the Stone Cow. And while they're there, they can also go to some of the orchards. Like there, there's, We can try to synergize all these things mm -hmm. to make them play off one another and turn this area into something that's a destination to go to rather than driving four hours to some crazy place like Sugarloaf or something, they can drive an hour and a half and still get almost everything that Vermont has. Thank you. The last item I wanted to bring up is this, and this is not really something that is addressed by you, but I think it's something that the community needs to realize, and it's part of the planning board, but I think it's more like the select board, mm -hmm. the town administrator. I brought it up last time that we spoke about this here. We have a significant amount of footprint inside of this town that is not really under any control of the town, which is really state land, mm -hmm. because it is for protective services. And the, the, the amount of revenue, or I shouldn't even call it revenue, the amount of taxes, or payment in lieu of taxes that the town receives from the state in order to protect these lands, which really are there for the aquifer around this area, in, in my opinion, are, 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 are the surface to the town. And, and I'm saying it's, it's great for the community at large and it's great for us because it opens up the area for, for, for this natural, uh, uh, the natural beauty that we have. But when it comes from a compensation perspective, and I think it's just something that I want to bring up from a general awareness perspective, I think the communities around here are suffering because of that, because they're not receiving the economic uh, uh, benefits that ought to be potentially be paid uh, to places like Old Town, Hubberson, Barry, etc., that are basically having to put forth a lot of land but not be able to tax it. If this were happening in Boston or if this were happening in Cambridge or Somerville, I think that people would be up in arms. And I think that's just something that in general we need to keep in mind and see how as a regional entity uh, and, and as, as communities, we can potentially come and do some lobbying uh, when it comes to uh, the you know, state house uh, in terms of getting Better and a more adequate compensation for this uh, for this land that is that is that is not really taxable by. Uh, That's uh, by a fair the point of view. Yeah. Thank you. That's outside of my scope. But I, I, I know. I, know I, I, I'm in resonance with that. I believe the state has a legal obligation to assess the land as a best and highest use value, and they pay a pretty significant amount of money. I can I can find out the amount. I, I, I'm you don't get much the of on the assessments on the state land. Pardon me. We don't get a lot of assessment on the state no. land in town. No. They don't, they don't pay much at all. No. Absolutely not. No. Well, we have the numbers. I can add them up. Okay. Todd? Yes. Um, we all should go back and look at what we have, but certainly in the way of information that would help Todd. But certainly included in that would be the survey results that we did in 2016 yeah. that are the basis for the master plan. The master plan outline, uh, a few chapters of which have been accomplished and many chapters of which have not yet been accomplished, but the economic development and open space and maybe some other ones are done. Mm -hmm. And it's our charge, it's the planning board's charge to get that done. And uh, so we'll give it to you, but we need all the help we can get. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and um, economic development in general. I have a lot of information on local industrial parks, and and, um, and frankly, uh, Hubbardson has a will have a tough time competing because of the lack of infrastructure, um, serviceable water, and, and power, and high speed internet, and. Uh, Rail and the internet's and doable. Rail yeah. very has an advantage advantage over you guys on. Um, well, I'm talking really Route Two corridor. Oh, okay. Right. You know, up and down Route Two. There's industrial park, industrial park, industrial park, industrial park, and they're all 0.23 miles off of Route Two. Exactly. They <laughs> yeah. or might even be adjoining it. Yeah, I think um, uh, Westminster has over 1,200 acres. Yeah, that's not commercial so property. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, 
I have it in that book with it some But it's the sort of thing, we, we, we do need to have a more comprehensive approach. It can't just be one single, we can't put all of our eggs in one basket. Correct. We're already kind of putting a lot of our eggs in the residential tax levy basket. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to branch out a bit. And uh, the first trick, like I said, is to stave off the population decline. Because the first thing folks are going to look at when they want to open up a new business, if they've got a business acumen, is to be like, okay, what are my future customers like? What's the average Hubbardstonian? You know, what are they like? Because if they're looking at the numbers now, the numbers are more of a, a hindrance than they are an asset. And we can start addressing that what first. Do you do? Well, think of it this way. If you were going to start up something, a business that sells widgets, anything, um, if you wanted to open up somewhere around here, you want to make sure that there's enough folks to sustain your business as far as possible customers. You mean buying widgets or making? Uh, like, say, if we're selling widgets. My thing is selling widgets. It's a traditional commercial storefront. Um, there aren't enough folks here as far as the longer standing trend for me to be comfortable risking a good amount of money putting that into a storefront and for developing a parcel of land if I'm not confident that this region is going to be economically healthy enough to sustain me in 5 or 10 or 15 years. So we need to shore up those numbers to make ourselves have the best face forward for folks that want to invest in town. Um, if we can stave off and staunch the bleeding, it'll help with the real estate tax levy, secondary benefit. But the tertiary benefit is going to make us much more attractive to folks that want to be entrepreneurs and work and live and reside in this community and start up a business. So we're going to have to shore up those kind of foundational infrastructural issues, make sure that we can address the population bleeding, and after that, then we can really start looking forward to putting all of our eggs and just attracting new businesses. We're going to be attracting new businesses the whole way along, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's A then B, but we're going to be doing all of them, but we need to shore up that population decline because that's really going to be the, the biggest red flag for folks that want to start up a business. What do you know about the state uh, the, the state plans for the two, Route 2 corridor development? Not much off the top of my head, um, but that's the sort of thing I can easily pull up and just chew on for a little while and get a sense of what they're projecting. I think it's too easy, but okay, if you can do it. <laughs> I'd be real interested in understanding it. Sure, because I, I can distill route, that a bit. Route 2 from a, from a heavy truck um, moving material interstate Route 2 is really a dead end. Mm. So you, you go over to Phillipson, it goes down to two lanes. And, yeah. and uh, it's dangerous as hell. You go over to Irving, it's down to two lane blue road blacktop. Um, well, well. And you're <laughs> on the edge of a river. Yeah. Uh, it's really a dead end. And, yeah. and it really need if that opens up, and I don't think it will open up in the, in the very near future, but potentially. Okay. But it's a state road. And it has always been, uh, the money never went there. We can, like, we can reach out to MassDOT and see if they have any documents that outlined development uh, plans for that chunk of Route 2. Because um, they're usually very good about following up with their projections, about having all the numbers and money <coughs> in the yeah, road. money goes somewhere else, you know? It, yeah, but they're usually pretty good about holding on to their, their work plans, their order at least. So from there, we might be able to, to kind of How magic ball some knowledge that might come out of it. How mm -hmm. about the uh, marijuana industry? That's something that is going to be a, it's going to be an asset for this area. Not necessarily for Hubbardston. I'm working with a couple of developers that are uh, constructing, you know the, the, do you guys know Hardwick very well? Mm -hmm. You know the large old knitting mill on Main Street? Mm -hmm. I just got uh, an application, well we got an application for a, a firm, a partnership that comes out of New York and uh, California. They want to redo that old mill, completely rehab the entire thing and turn it into a essentially a destination where it has a the, the manufacturing and processing in the back, but in the front they have a restaurant, a brewery, a storefront and dispensary, that sort of thing. They're going to turn that into its own little destination in the middle of Main Street. And with it, it's going to come between 55 and 100 jobs. It depends on what capacities they're allowed to operate in. That there makes them the second largest employer in Hardwick behind the school. So that's going to be kind of Hardwick's strategy, is to leverage their industrial space for interior growing for that stuff. Um, I'm not saying that'll fit Hard Robertson at all, because I, I don't think it really We don't have any big... Exactly. You know, like we don't Athol, have any large mills. We don't have any... Athol has a project. I think they have 400,000 square feet under yeah. there. And the same thing with Whitensville. My grandmother lives in Whitensville, yeah. and she's you know all involved with that. It's Those mill t those old mill buildings are going to be the first, they're the lowest hanging fruit to redevelop. And uh, that's... Well, I've done it. Yeah. I got some slides on, on Littleton, which has 
there's a marijuana store in Gardner, mm -hmm. which is a, a retail outlet for a growing operation in Littleton. And Littleton's community agreement, uh, I think it's roughly $100,000 a year yeah. coming out of a 30,000 square foot building. Yeah, that, that's kind of Hardwick's, that's kind of their strategy. Um, that's a larger component of their, uh, their economic development strategy. And part of my job is to make sure that we don't compete with each other. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to find something. If you have applicants for that sort of thing that come before you guys looking for a host community agreement or have an idea to redevelop or grow outside, I'd love to get involved in that just to make sure that the iteration that gets that happens here in Harvestin doesn't interact with Hardwick. Part of my job is mostly to be a not a referee but kind of like a gate a concierge to make sure you guys don't compete with each other. We, we've talked to half a dozen yep. opportunities. Yeah. Um, for revenue, jobs, mm -hmm. um, a development of type. Yeah. And how do we move from sitting and waiting for someone to ring our doorbell with mm -hmm. this opportunity to actively promoting the town for the kind of opportunity that we want? Well, so if I could, I'm well, sorry, ahead, if I could yeah. jump in there. So one of my last questions for, for our time here would be if you as a board had a dream final product or an end product of, of Todd's work, what would that be? So that might be um, an investigation of, of something like that or a product that puts us into that place. But what are your thoughts and, and what are your direction in terms of, you know, if you finish your year here and this is what we got out of it, that would be great. I don't know if that's answerable tonight, but that helps us frame uh, his time and his work here in Hubberson. It, it's, not, perfect? <laughs> it's not very easily answered tonight. You'd have to overgeneralize. But um, the survey and the master plan, you, before you set out exactly what to do, you have to kind of ask yourself, what do you want the town to be in 10 years? What do you want the town to be in 30 years? What do you want it to look like? Uh, do you want it to look like Holden's Main Street? <laughs> or, or, you know, or... Not the traffic problems? Uh, Bedford, or, you know, what is it gonna, what is it really gonna look like? Not just visually, but yeah, just was it feel like, was it smell like, was it taste like? Because yeah, communities, like, are, they're, they're living things. I don't want to anthropomorphize them too much, yeah. but cities to me are alive. They have a personality. They have a routine and a rhythm. They, they have their own quirks and foibles and assets, and that's something that you really need to, to be in touch with, and that's what makes you, I think, in my opinion, a good planner or a good planning board member or something like that knowing what's in spirit of a town, and it's kind of ineffable. We can't really elucidate it properly. It just is, if that makes sense. But that's something that we all need to be on the same well, page it's, with. it's moldable. It it's is. Changeable. It's changeable. It, it, it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, it transforms I, and has different permutations. And for a lot of reasons, I drive through the two over near Athol. Mm -hmm. There's this giant market basket complex <laughs> building on a hill <laughs> and, and yeah. the downtown is getting a brewery and then, yeah. you know it, it's uh their library is really nice mm -hmm. uh, they have a ymca which is a little rare in small towns uh, it's just <coughs> it's just kind of interesting and it was always a a town that wasn't really a magnet yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> but they've got a chance at it you know, if you look at that complex that they put over there on Athol, that was offered to Templeton, yep. and Templeton declined it. And they're actually starting to work that property right off the roof, too. Mm -hmm. uh, in now, Templeton, you mean? In Templeton, I promise. Yeah, but it's a long way off. But they lost all that revenue, and, lo and look how it looks now. It's beautiful out there, and they bring in a lot of business over there with all the different, and they got more businesses going in there. And it has the potential to kill downtown, but they're going to they're gonna work on it. Right. Well, how do you bring something like that into our community? They keep it off the beaten path so it doesn't destroy the community look, mm -hmm. but bring in something like that. Yeah. How, how do you get that? So would that come in the form of a consolidation of all existing plans into one directional plan? This is uh, Final Products talking here. Yeah. Or options, right? Options to present to a town meeting, say, you know, this is a consolidation of ideas from the planning board, the select board, and, and, and current structures. Um, what would you like Todd to do? And again, I'm not saying answer it now, but this is the direction that I want to give the 20% of time that we have. Correct. Uh, because if we are able to fund this position again or, or it's fruitful, then Todd will be doing that next yeah. year. And that's kind of what we want to be at. But what I don't want is to, um, 
to not direct this energy that we have here and have, have it go somewhere else. Right. Um, I hope that some town folk see this discussion, hear this discussion, hear about this discussion. Um, I hope to have you back again. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll do this again. I and I think <laughs> we need to put more on the table, more concrete stuff on the table. Here's the report on this thing. Here's the report on this. The more you and, give me, the, I would rather have way too much than not really yeah. much. I would rather possibly give him all that information and we all go up, get up to date on it and then have another meeting and sit down and talk a little more. That sounds great. Yeah. I think that way well, we, you and, know. And, and how do we involve um, CONCOM, not we involve, but how do, how does this effort um, gather up all the other thinkers and doers in town? Um, and I don't mean to only point at board members of various things, but to citizens. Yep. How do we marshal the energy in citizens to contribute to it, both you know, in the idea phase, but also in the do the work phase? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the master plan needs some help. It right. needs, needs real of, workers. It needs people to sit down and write There are beautiful documents that are just dusting on shelves. It, yeah. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> but it, it really is. Like, I've seen some elegant documents that are wonderful, that are equal, everyone agrees, are wonderful documents that have been sitting on the shelf since 78. You know, I'm that's, gonna, that's heartbreaking. I'm going to finish with a little story, I think. Uh, a woman um, took, the took down from the shelf Worcester's uh, master plan mm -hmm. and she was just reading through it and it came upon a chapter on uh, open space and, and preservation of land and uh, she and another woman started the Worcester County Land Trust ah, yeah. and today they have like 2,700 acres oh, yeah. in Worcester yeah. under preservation mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a marvelous story they just celebrated their 30th anniversary I was there for that. They had a little cake, and, yeah. and uh, but just just taking that plan down mm -hmm. and reading it and saying, "I'm going to do this." Yeah, yeah. Very the greater, powerful. The Greater Worcester Land Trust is an amazing organization. Yep. I worked with them when I was doing all my work in Worcester. I worked for the Main South uh, Community Development Committee, um, and I Worcester. I I got a soft spot for Worcester. I went to school there, at least for my undergraduate stuff, and I I love that town. But we're getting off topic. Um, <laughs> my, my fear is, my fear would be Todd gives a presentation at the end of his one year, which will be this time, around this July, time yeah. next year. And one of our boards and, and all the big boards in town or a resident says, you know what would have been great is if this would have been incorporated. Mm -hmm. So why not spend a little energy now making sure that Todd has everything that we want? And then maybe we can get some of that harmony we're talking about and that cohesiveness I, I, in terms of the law. I, I hear what you're saying, but I think at six months, you have to have your army in place and people marching. You can't wait till the end of the year and say, oh, here's my report, and no one has been mobilized. <laughs> right. You have to mobilize and move, make people be, not make, uh, uh, have people moving forward towards their goals with assignments and things happening so that when you leave at six more months, the momentum carries. It's not a report. It's a, it's a, uh, Active army. Do you think this should you should have a meeting like this with other boards besides the planning board and the select them? Yeah. So and, and we believe that the planning board should go first for this conversation to help frame, considering it, it's a it's a okay. planning question. Uh, next, probably sometime next month, we'll have uh, Todd go in front of the select board. Hopefully, some of it will be developed. We'll invite the planning board, of course, uh, to have a conversation with them, you know, as, as policymakers, yeah. and then um, and then do. Right. Uh, finance committee for sure at some yeah. point. There's only so much Todd to go around, so I don't want to <laughs> burn him out. But uh, ah, it's all right. I I, I could like talk about good this. energy level. I, I could talk about this for ages. It's fine. Maybe um, you had a, another question in the bank. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, one thing. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, have you perhaps take a specific look at is we have uh, seven or eight gravel pits in our town, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them are um, depleted and but they're larger tracts of land. And if we were going to ever consider a Hobbiton Industrial Park, That'd be the best. Um, a lot of that land might be uh, usable, well, you know, given given the right industry to come. We'd have to check the zoning and all of that. Well, that's, that's one thing we'd have to check. The, the zoning could be expanded 
you know, if, if that's where I go to have, have a business class. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, certainly uh, you could have you taken one of those gravel pits <laughs> and <laughs> <you> <laughs> put back yeah, and basket yeah. there with that whole complex. Yeah. So, so that's, I'm, I'm asking you specifically to I'll take a look at the opportunities in like that like area. Just what I put I'll take a look. I don't one. know how okay. well Big Box so would we don't go. Want as people far as well, I, I don't this. know if folks would push back against it. Um, I don't want to see this turn into like a gardener situation where they have a Walmart and they have a, you know, all these huge chains. Those they have a long, there's a long academic track record that pulls against the big box stores and the way that it kind of increases leakage of, in the community. Yeah, so you can design an industrial park to have whatever types of uh, industry in there. They don't have to be Walmart or, or, yeah. or that that type of. Yeah, we, we would probably have to have some folks that were expressing interest that are coming from the industrial side, so we know this tenant or whatever we build. Yep. But yeah, I'm totally open to that, absolutely. Thank you. I'd yeah. like to throw out there at the beginning of our conversation during this meeting when we were talking with you, Todd, you, know, you or someone else made mention of Marlboro? I, I, Mar spoke, I spoke about And Marlboro. how well they've come and how, what they have done. Yeah. How, what are you talking about? Are they very industrialized? I know they. Yeah, I was talking about their development pattern. Yeah. Well, right. That kind of would kind of ruin our rural exactly. ca character. Yeah. You're right. But can you attract? Yeah, four ninety-five. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, that's But true. can you attract something a little portion of that? And like we've talked before, you really don't get much revenue off of that. But a lot of these communities have made a lot of money off of them. Yeah. Well, um, usually, you, whenever you're looking at commercial development like that, if you look at it at the spillover into land values which increases land values, which increases your, your real estate tax levy by proxy. So you're not really targeting the commercial development for just the commercial taxation. Mm -hmm. You're looking for it as it increases demand for land in this area, which increases prices, which increases tax levy revenue. So you're, you're kind of looking at it two or three steps removed. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that the exact development pattern that, that Marlboro chose to take, which is not right or wrong, it's just different. Um, I don't know if that is uh, in line with what we want to have here. And that's fine, because yeah. I, I think that's too much anyway, so. Yeah, it, it's a whole bunch. <laughs> like Rutland, <clears throat> Rutland has had a effort beating the drum for almost 30 years mm -hmm. on developing where the Rutland State Hospital was. It's 85 acres, it's, uh, it's right in the center of town. sewer, yeah. uh, drinking water, everything's in there, the infrastructure's there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they have not had any nibbles, yeah. and I think they have a nibble now, but it's a very small piece of the whole pie. I'd have to make some calls. I don't know if they have a nibble. Yeah, right. they have a half a nibble, and, uh, but good for them. Yeah. But, it, but the point is, um, an in industrial development is really hard, and Rutland, as you said earlier, their land values are going up, their yeah. tax revenues are going up by proxy, as you yeah. just said, without industrial development. Just yeah. by the plain old squeeze of population. Yeah. And it's, uh, well, they've really overbuilt, so it's. I, I think they're kind of. You ain't seen nothing, yeah. yeah they're kind so of in, uh, not panic mode, but they're in kind of damage control mode. Mm -hmm. I that's think they've right. overburdened the cart and now they're trying to sort it out. Um, and that's, you know, they didn't have a prof professional planner on staff. They had citizen planners, like in the, in, the, in the planning boards, and that's not to knock them. They did their level best. Um, but <coughs> this is, that's the situation that really kind of gets the need and belies the need for a, uh, a professional member of the planning staff. They also changed the regulations. Or right actually too. dropped them. Yeah, they, dropped they them. loosened them or just removed them altogether, which shows the need for regulation, you know, within reason. Um, how are we doing? That's about it. Are we overloaded on time? or? You, 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 we've taken more of you than, <laughs> you're, you're very generous. And I appreciate your coming in. We owe you some things. We want to make your time here easy and effective. Yeah. So we want to give you everything we got. And at the risk of overloading you, we're going to give it to you rather than hold. If, if, if it's on the cusp and you don't know yeah. if I want it or not, give it to me. Right. I'm going to give you my and, contacts and, uh, and the keep of the paperwork. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. Um, but um, um, my We will try to keep a list of what we're giving you. My so. main goal for serving this entire region, this is my home. I do want to make sure that these five towns, they understand the stakes of what's coming up down the line in five to seven years. And I want to really make as big a splash as possible so folks around here know that they might even not know what the planning function does. That's okay, not everyone has to. But people know the end results of bad planning or no planning. And 
Uh, people have driven in Boston. They know what happens when you don't plan. <laughs> and I want to avoid as much of that clutter and chaos as possible and make sure that folks are, are set up for success in the next generation that comes in. So it's, it's really important to me that even if I don't get another year or we don't extend this, we don't get the grant or whatever, I want to make sure that this entire region is set up to kind of coast through and have, have some surety that they're going to be okay. That's really my, my main primary goal. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome. Um, if you guys have anything else, you can call me, email me at the information you have. I can give you my phone number too. Uh, that's you, know, you can call me. Are you sure you want that? Do that. You I'm know what you afraid. can do if you email it to the plan at right there. That's oh, my yeah. email. I can forward it off to those guys. Oh right, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll. we'll so uh, do you want me to write it on there? Oh yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll exchange. Yeah, sure. Write it right on here. Sure. And we'll post as much of this information sure. as we can, so I that not, not just you get it, but the public gets it. You can read that. Cheers. Thirty-seven one zero. Okay. Yeah, thirty-seven. But Thank I'm, I'm going to make sure that those deliverables that we talked about uh, are done sooner than later. I would rather give you guys a draft soon, so that way we can talk about the draft and start working on that. Let's just start with dates. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll talk. Yeah. But, uh, Ryan, I've got all the energy. I just want to get it done. I, I know we cover a lot of ground, but have uh, has this accomplished from your perspective? Has this? From my perspective, it's accomplished what I want to do. I, I want to hear these things. But from your perspective, have we uh, advanced or stayed marching in place, or <laughs> where, where are we? Uh, this is good. So um, I gave some solid deliverables from my office. Uh, Todd's been able to hear what the, the planning board wants, efforts that have been made, some challenges we heard tonight, mm -hmm. some, uh, some of the different sticking points were, were, were discussed, and, and you picked up on some of those, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, the same will happen at, at the select board meeting. It will be a, sort of a different approach, a different audience. And then it, the idea here is to combine into one vision you know, for the town and to stop stop the idea that there's a master plan and there's what the selectmen want and what the planning board wants and kind of figure out you know, what does Hubberson want is what does Hubberson want to look like. And I, this is the great opportunity to, to use a coordinator. That's the whole point of the idea. So let's mm -hmm. use it. Yeah, so so to answer your question, yes, this was really helpful. Got good input from from the planning board, and hopefully energize the planning board to help in this process. Uh, later on down the line, I spoke to Teresa, and she expressed interest along with myself about getting some folks, all the town administrators, mm -hmm. um, if we can arrange it scheduling wise. To once we're down down the line a bit, and we know kind of sort of what the plan is, having all of you guys kind of kind of meet up together and exchange some ideas, much like we're having now. So Teresa is the town administrator for Hardwick and, and New Braintree. Forty percent of clubs. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't go to her. need to. She's a heavy gal. I think having all the. I didn't take uh, what you did. I have what I did. I have the old email. We're supposed to meet next week. And, uh, It'll be in October. What we can do is. Uh, are you in tomorrow? This was going to be. How are you just? How are you settling? What's all we're settling in? Sort of meeting. I think. So. I still don't have a computer. Oh, I'm not in town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in town. I've been doing all my documents from at home on my time. So those the okay. deliverables we talked about? Yeah. yeah, we'll talk after. I don't want to talk about it. Yes, you did. Right here. Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Any, anything you need? Yeah. Okay. And, um, just, I've just right? noticed that I stayed with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to, like, go ahead and pay them. Okay. Um, um, you're not in tomorrow either. Why don't you look at them and um, okay. let me know maybe Monday or Tuesday. What? Hold them until Monday. Okay. I'll come over to your office Monday. When time do you come? <laughs> Three. All right, three o'clock Monday. Okay, I'll be there at three thirty. Give you a chance to. Right. To talk about oh, no, it's gonna be dry. You get a bit wet. Dad, you bring it to the next meeting. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, I'll, 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 let me let me ask you. Should you hang it. it? Hello, folks. No. Um, should hang it. Um, I need a I need uh, authorization to resolve the um, the place the um, Borrego. Payments to their uh, buckets—I'll call them buckets—their accounts 
from which the money goes to places. I'm going to meet with, I, I plan, I'd like authorization to meet with Patty uh, Monday and our treasurer accountant, pick up kind of where Tom Bracco left off. He was sorting this out. I have no familiarity with it. You need it. a motion for that? Well, I don't know what I, I don't need, think but I, I'm, I'm going to go do that, okay? Right. So she won't be in Monday, so I think we just need to talk about whether we're going to authorize me to cut a couple checks through them for places. I didn't. Is this the money Monday? that's going back to the to I Borrego because it's it being bought out? No, no. Um, it came in from Borrego because they they use the services of Bill Murray, and now it's got to go out to Bill Murray. This is for Gardner Road, and this was for I think when you did the walk through the site walk. Yeah. So. So it's a seventeen hundred dollar bill yeah. for that site walk that um, he did. Remember, yep. it was a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> we'll we'll authorize payment of that, and um, I just want to see that it's going in the right buckets and the right accounts. Okay. We'll call I'll, I'll meet up with you Monday, and we'll we'll do whatever we have to do. I'd like to make a motion that we figure out how we're going to fix this problem with Francois being on the board. Um, well, uh, I want to be a selectman of appointing them, and you say you won't recognize them. How do we fix this? Um, I don't think it's that complicated. Um, the select board, I, in my opinion, didn't follow the right process. We put a name forward, and they ignored us and did something on their own. They need to, I think, correct that situation. If our name is, if the name we put forward is in some way unacceptable, you ought to communicate to us. And uh, if we have to put up another name, then we have to put up another name. But it's just like the filling of the uh, empty seat when Tom resigned. Uh, Ryan put forth a process that when we followed it, we got two great candidates. Or what a two appear to be great candidates. And um, if well, you I follow the process, things well, work out well. If you don't follow the process, you end up in a So how can problem. we fix this so we can go forward here? I want to I get this, going, this board moving on so we can all sit down and work together, but we can't work like this. So you okay, don't agree with what the... Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We you can't Tom, like let me finish, please. Okay. You don't agree with what the select board did. How do we get everybody together and we fix this? I told them. Well, we need to move forward here and... and Tom told them. Tom told them in a letter. I told them verbally. But I think we do employ a town manager, and they oversee the, the regulations and the laws. Um, not, nothing against you and Tom. Maybe my interpretation would be different, too. I don't know. I haven't read the regulations. But who are we going to go by here? Are we, are we just going to ignore this now? I, I don't no. think it's right. I, Tom, I don't think it's right. All right. Here's, here's a comment. You said we can't work this way. Recognize that the alternative... The, the alternate member only involves, only is involved in planning board activity when um, the issue is a vote on a special permit, none of which we have before us, and the regular board, for some reason, um, is is incapacitated or fails to be able to do a supermajority, which is full. But I still, and thank you for that information, but I still think it's wrong for us to keep going forward in the manner that we are, that this is still not, we haven't finished this. We need to, as a board, or as a group, selectman, town, whoever, we need to fix this and, and move on from there, instead of having this turmoil right in front of us every time we meet. I don't have any turmoil. Well, I'm not turmoil, but it's, it's just not right. I want to move on this way. We need to either get with the town manager, the selectman, town council, have you meet with them? Uh, we need to fix this, one way or another. Ed's got his hand up. Yes, sir. Well, you've got a joint meeting coming up uh, next Monday. Why don't you put that on the agenda for the joint meeting? And then you'll have all the players around the table, and you can uh, you can address it at that time and, and get some closure. If I may, uh, I believe that this is a matter that needs to be addressed by the town council because the laws and regulations, as well as the bylaws, need to be interpreted from a legal perspective. I understand that Tom Robinson, as well as Tom Bracco, have, have a certain interpretation of the law. And I'm not judging you one way or the other. You have the right to interpret this here. But the true interpretation really has to come from town council. 
and it is my thought and my belief that it is therefore a matter that needs to be addressed by them. I um, would be reluctant to spend a lot of money on town council for this nonsense. I think if the uh, select board uh, meet with us Monday and I express to them what they have to do, it can be resolved very easily. As I say, Tom did it in writing, Tom did it verbally, I did it verbally. Um, if I can capture their attention, we could resolve this Monday. We've tried that once. Well, can, can uh, we it's a matter of capturing their attention. And, can we and put that on Monday's agenda? Right. Are you asking me? Yeah. I, I don't control the agenda. Yeah. Um, it's oh, a joint well, meeting. You, you could communicate with the selectmen that, uh, that this issue had come up, and uh, would they like to see it on the agenda? That I can't. I can ask them. They, yes. they, they could Thank listen you. to this tonight and know that what they have to do. That's, it's very simple. Uh, they're not in the process. They have to get back in the process, and when they do, it'll work out fine. I have no problem. Well, I think we have to uh, uh, differentiate between opinions and law. Correct. So uh, with that, maybe uh, Monday's meeting will suggest that it should be referred to town council and get the matter resolved so we can Move, move forward, hopefully. We have no impediment due to this situation, and we have no turmoil. We have no hindrance to our, our uh, board. Well, there is an impediment, because the impediment comes up when you have a special permit. You Ed, don't have you didn't an hear associate me. member. I when said. You have a, when you have a supermajority vote, all right. you don't have it. That I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, we're not going to drag this out. It's very simple. I've explained it here tonight. I've explained it to the select board. The issue is not going to be discussed any further. I'm, uh, I guess I'm getting a little tired. I'm going to take a motion to adjourn. And, but before I do, I want to thank you people for attending tonight. I think it was very, very helpful. I want to thank the people from the public that attended and, and your contribution, comments uh, about other towns and what you know from other towns. Thank you very much. Patty, thank you for being here. But good night. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Second that motion. Okay. Can you make it? I'll second. And uh, uh, we're back in the place here Monday. Correct. With a select team. Yep. 6 30. So we, uh, we adjourn at 8 30. Two. Meeting Monday. 6 30. <laughs> the meeting's at 6 30 on Monday. Okay. It is the first agenda item and the first thing that will be done, the, any other business for the selectmen will be conducted after. Okay. okay. I won't be here. I'll miss you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a